Hello, hello, lads, and welcome to Cozy Science, the place where we bring you the latest in scientific research all wrapped up in a warm and simple package. Today, you are tuning into episode 74, I guess, and the question goes, have you ever wondered how the education level of your grandparents might be affecting your health today? Or how a little more academic freedom could spark innovation. Well, today's episode is all about the hidden threads that connect education, brain health, and wisdom. We'll be diving into several fascinating studies that might just change the way you think about learning and its lifelong effects. So, grab your favorite blanket, maybe a cup of tea, coffee, and let's get cozy with some science after a very short intro. we are going to start with something that is close to the heart – childhood brain health. Researchers at St. Jude's found that early interventions can significantly boost long-term academic achievements in young childhood brain tumor survivors. Imagine this – kids who have already been through so much are given the support they need early on and it plays off in their school years, making them more likely to thrive academically. These interventions might include things like cognitive therapies or special educational support tailored to their unique needs. And what are the results? Well, a better chance at succeeding in school, which can open up so many doors later in life. But yet, you might ask, well, but why does this research matter? Well, because academic success isn't just about good grades, right? It's about giving these children a fighting chance at a fulfilling life despite the obstacles they have faced early on. It's a reminder that the right support at the right time can make all the difference. Now, let's talk about the freedom to innovate. A study from the Technical University of Munich shows that more academic freedom leads to more innovation. It seems pretty obvious, right? Well, give people the freedom to explore without too many restrictions, and they come up with new exciting ideas. But the study goes deeper, showing that institutions with more academic freedom tend to produce more patents, uh, or patents and innovative research. This isn't just about letting professors do what they want, but it's about creating environments where creativity can flourish and that, have, uh, that can have huge ripple effects on society as a whole. Moving on to something that might surprise you. Your biological age could be influenced by your grandparents' education level. Yes, you heard that right. A study from Drexel University found that higher levels of education in previous generations are linked to better biological markers of health in their grandchildren. It seems that educational or education itself can have a lasting legacy, affecting not just the person who received it, but their descendants too. So, your grandparents hitting the books might just be keeping you younger, well, at least, biologically. Next up, let's delve into wisdom. What makes someone wise in your point of view? You can write in the commentary section below before I'm continuing. Okay, well, I'm going to continue. Right. So, according to research from the University of Waterloo, people seen as wise share certain characteristics. They tend to be open-minded, emotionally stable, and emphatic. 
This research helps us to understand that wisdom isn't just about intelligence or knowledge. It's about the way we interact with the world and others. So, if you have ever wondered why some people just seem to have that um, wise aura, now you know the answer. And why is it that children often struggle to pay attention? Another study from a higher state university provides some answers to that question. It turns out children's brain are wired in a way that makes it harder for them to focus on a single task. Well, remember yourself when you were a child, I think it was the same situation, at least for me. It was very difficult to focus on something one. And yeah, you've been doing, well, I personally, I was doing a lot of things at the same time, but not focusing on studying, of course. And the brain are still developing of a child, right? And the ability to filter our distractions, which is why a lot of kids can seem easily uh, distracted. So it's quite difficult to filter out these distractions. And understanding these can help parents and teachers better support kids in focusing and learning, of course. And finally, let's talk about non-cognitive skills. Things like perseverance, self-control and social skills. A study from Queen Mary University of London revealed that these skills are just as important, if not more so, than cognitive skills like memory and reasoning when it comes to academic success. So, next time, next time someone tells you that being book, um, that being book smart is everything, you might want to tell them about this study. And it shows that sometimes it's the hidden skill that truly really make a difference, right? And as always, you might ask, well, why does this research matter? Well, these studies show us that education and the environment we create around it have profound impact on health, innovation, wisdom, and even on how well children can focus. It's not just about the knowledge we pass down, but also about the support, freedom, and environment we provide from childhood to adulthood. Quite interesting yeah, how the accent after the Queen, Queen's Mary's University um, changed. <laughs> Anyways, now I want to hear from you a little question uh, to ponder on. Do you think wisdom comes more from life experiences or from formal education? Drop your thoughts in the comments or our discussion forums. I'm really curious to see what you all think about this. I personally think that, first of all, wisdom, what is wisdom? It is an open question. We do not really know the meaning of it. Or it might be different in different areas and in different people, of course. Well, and for me personally, wisdom is all about personal experience and life experience and not formal education. What about you? And we decided to add a little, uh, well, a new chapter to our uh, episodes with Thesis Idea. And for those of you uh, looking for a research topic, why not explore the long-term effects of early educational interventions on health and cognitive outcomes in later life? It is a rich area with so much to uncover, and who knows, you might just contribute to the next big breakthrough in educational psychology or public health. And of course, a little advice for everybody. So, next time you are helping a child with their homework or even just reading a book yourself, remember, education has ripple effects far beyond the classroom. It can shape futures, influence health, and even in some small ways contribute to your wisdom. And before we wrap up, let's take a quick look at what happened on this day in science history. So in 2006, the first vaccine for a type of meningitis was offered to babies in the UK as a part of the National Childhood Immunization Program. This was a huge step towards or forward in protecting vulnerable infants from serious infections like meningitis, which can have devastating consequences. Imagine how many lives have been saved and how much suffering has been prevented since that vaccine was introduced. 
And otherwise, that's it for today's episode of Cozy Science. I hope you enjoyed getting cozy with these fascinating studies, and remember to always stay curious, stay informed, and most importantly, stay cozy.